Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism. It's my hope that on this channel you find answers you need to help you make sense of these relationships, what's happened to you, how to heal, how to find your way out, or how to not find your way in in the first place. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. We'd love to have you join this community. If you're interested in doing a deeper dive on healing, we talk about healing on this channel, but if you want to go deeper, do go to the video notes, hit that link, and it'll take you to our healing our healing platform if you want that you again want to go deeper on that and if you like this video just give us that thumbs up and if we do put videos out every day hit that notification bell and you'll be told every day when that new bit of information of about narcissism comes out so today and this one has a bit more of a healing bent and also helps you reflect on the dynamics of this relationship i'd love to have you put this one in the comments too because i'm going to put this to you as a question how many of you found that over time that the way you talk to yourself is actually meaner than the way that the narcissist often talks to you? Give me that one in the comments and let's talk about this. Because this is what happens over time in narcissistic relationships. People start talking to themselves more mean than the narcissist talks to them. So let's start by thinking about the anatomy of a narcissistic relationship. Love bomb, devalue, future fake, gaslight, discard, hoover, on and on. You know how it works, right? As time goes on, even if you do understand what is happening to you, it's still quite likely that you're going to end up blaming yourself, doubting yourself, and even gaslighting or future faking yourself. You tell yourself that things will get better. You make deals with yourself. You say, I will do this or I will do that, and then I will make things better. You self-gaslight. You not only doubt yourself, you speak badly about yourself. You devalue yourself. You invalidate yourself. You minimize yourself. You call yourself stupid or crazy or worse. That's self-harming behavior, isn't it? And then over time, one of the worst things that can happen in a narcissistic relationship happens. We literally become our own perpetrators. It's as though we have so internalized the patterns of the narcissistic relationship. Perhaps we've mirrored them. Perhaps we're trying to get ahead of them. But we literally start doing to ourselves what the narcissists do to us. And it becomes an inner voice we can't get out of our heads. And that creates an even bleaker pattern. We are not only enduring the abuse from the narcissists and the enablers, but now we are doing it to ourselves. As a result, the negative talk, whether it's from the outside, from the narcissistic folks or the enablers, or the self-talk from ourselves, starts to become the only voice that we hear. Now, some of this relates to the cognitive dissonance. We need the pieces of our narratives, of what is happening around us, to fit. So we make them fit. Narcissistic relationships leave us feeling out of control. So the only thing we actually can control is how we talk to ourselves about them. Our own histories may make it more likely that we feel compelled to make it work and make the pieces fit, just as we might have done as kids if we had narcissistic parents. Well, dad's yelling because he works really hard for us, or mom doesn't mean what she says. She just had a really difficult childhood. I just need to be better. Well, if we want to make all of these conflicting pieces fit, just the way we did as kids, we may end up telling ourselves stories about ourselves. Oh, well, they aren't that bad. I'm the one who's too sensitive. I'm the one who's broken. I'm the one who's damaged because I came from a broken and damaged family or I am doomed to only being in this kind of relationship. So I think I just need to put up and shut up. Maybe I just love drama. And we end up mirroring the patterns that we are observing we basically talk to ourselves the way that the narcissist talked to us, and it becomes horribly consistent that way. No more dissonance. If we were to listen to how we talk to ourselves, it's actually quite horrifying. The things that I have heard survivors repeatedly say to themselves over the years include, I am an idiot. I am gross. I am disgusting. I don't deserve better. If I share my needs with someone, I know they're going to leave, so I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Maybe this is as good as someone like me gets. I just need to be more patient. It's my fault. I'm really entitled, so 
think it, sh it would get better quickly if I just change myself. No, there's something wrong with me. That's why the two of us belong together. I'm just a codependent fool. No, I think I'm just drawn to toxic. I'm not trying hard enough. If I just try harder and just have more realistic expectations, it'll get better. And let me tell you, that's an unfortunate twist on the concept of realistic expectations. And then there's the, I am too old, I am too overweight, I am too broke, I am too haggard, pick your own self-insult, to think someone else will come along. I might as well stick this relationship out. I'm a bitch. My parents had a hard childhood. I'm a monster for expecting so much from them. Hey, throw in some of your negative self-talk in the comments too, though that's going to be real dark. In session, for decades, I have had clients say to me, Dr. Romani, I'm even afraid to talk to you today. I am so embarrassed at what I did, and you are going to hate me and lose all respect for me. I mean, with that build up, I'm waiting to hear what this horrible transgression they committed. I'm waiting for them to tell me they robbed a bank or something. And then I'll hear, you're not going to believe this, Dr. Romani. I responded to their text. You hate me, right? You're going to fire me as a patient. And it just breaks my heart when I hear this. Because if they think the human, the human behavior of simply responding to a text would result in a therapist slamming the door on them or being disappointed in them, it only means that they're saying terrible things and have terrible expectations of the world and for themselves all the time. It means they are living in so much shame over just doing normal stuff in relationships that are anything but normal. Now, if a narcissist leaves them as part of the discard, then this can become worse. Survivors believe that the relationships made them even more awful and will walk around asking themselves, I'm really awful. Actually, I think I'm the narcissist. Why would anyone want to stay with me? The descent into sort of this sort of self-betrayal, self-perpetration, call it what you want, and it's likely a mashup of mirroring and emulating the narcissist's language, not just from your current adult relationships, but perhaps also from childhood. And the internalization of those negating voices is a common pattern in almost all narcissistic relationships. Obviously, these are not relationships where you can walk around or talk or even think about your goodness. You don't get to walk around and think, that you are strong or say things like, I'm valuable, I'm important, I'm lovable, I'm kind. Because that identity, if you had it for yourself, is being invalidated on the daily. It is really hard to live in such an incongruous way, to constantly be told that you suck or you're mentally unwell. Because if at the same time you believe that you're good, something has to give. And if you stay in the relationship, the thing that ends up giving is you how you talk about yourself. And before long, you are harming yourself as much as a narcissist is. It's a way to snap out of that dissonance, right? Even watching and reading and listening to content about narcissism, like this channel, hearing that these personalities and these patterns don't really change. And then a person knowing that still goes back into the relationship, then the person feels embarrassed. Like, oh my gosh, I'm watching these videos and I don't get it. Remember that most people take a long time before they really hit their rock bottom and get out or that the narcissist finally leaves them. And then going back fuels the, oh, I'm so stupid. Or maybe for someone as dumb as me, this is it because I keep going back. And even when someone finally may get out of a narcissistic or antagonistic relationship, they may continue this kind of self-harming talk by saying things like, oh, I'm such an idiot that it took me 30 years to figure it out. Now, other things start to slip when we are in narcissistic relationships. We stop taking care of our health. We may not eat well or take our medications or get regular health care or pursue interests that we care deeply about or even keep up our space, our home, whatever, as well as we could or as the way we want or stop maintaining healthy relationships or even stop having goals or dreams or aspirations. With everything being invalidated, your life can feel like it devolves into a why bother. And then a person looks around and says, well, look at my life. It's a mess. I don't do anything. I feel like crap. So it must be me. I suck. I'm no good. But the life force gets sucked out of us in these narcissistic relationships. So here is a thought and something to try. I want you to think of how you talk to yourself as an adult, right? The things you say to yourself. 
the ways you view yourself. Then I want you to find a picture of yourself as a small child. And I want you to say those things to that picture. Really, look at that beautiful wee little picture of you, cute as can be, and tell that little you that they're an idiot or they're foolish or damaged. This isn't easy to do. I want you to give it a shot so you stop doing it to yourself now because you're the same person. And sadly, I know for some of you, these things were said to you at the, that little person age, but do it. Tell that beautiful small you the things you say to yourself now. It's a picture, but you'll feel it. It doesn't feel good. In fact, it's painful. And it may be too painful, which I understand. And if this exercise feels triggering, don't, you don't feel compelled to do it. Do it with a therapist or someone guiding you. But that little you is the same spirit in the big you. Please, talk, stop talk, please stop talking to yourself that way. It's not okay. Somehow the visual of saying it to even the image of an innocent child may snap you back into how awful these things you are saying to yourself really are. The way we talk to ourselves shapes our reality. When we tell ourselves that we are damaged or stupid, we lean into that identity. To me, that is the ultimate tragedy of narcissistic abuse. We harm ourselves and reality every day by using the language of the narcissist to refer to ourselves because you are still that little person carrying those core wounds. So when you want to use all of that damaging language to talk about yourself, please stop. I get it. You learn to talk this way about yourself and about yourself after a long time of hearing it and doing it but it's time to stop. Catch yourself. The narcissist will still invalidate, but it's time for you to learn a new vocabulary and to stop doing the narcissistic people's dirty work. Thanks again.